Hi, I'm Nicole, and I'm here to tell the stories of our students at the New York Institute of Art and Design. And today we are meeting with Kathleen Conlin, a wedding and events um, specialist. So welcome. Thank you. So just a little background. Um, You were very inspired by your own weddings, correct, to go into the field. And you finished the course in six months. I did. It's amazing. (laughs) And you were almost immediately hired by the Crystal Springs Resort in New Jersey as the wedding and special events coordinator. Yes. And then you received a raise after only a month and a half. Yeah. Fantastic. Good. Right <laughs> so um, part of the reason why we wanted to interview you today is because we read your application for graduate of the year and we wanted to let you know um, that you are a finalist for graduate of the year. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> fun. You <laughs> I'm that's so it's this isn't like something that I had really any background in other than the course so I feel like I got hired I felt like yes like I could do this one of the things I said in my interview was that I if I put my mind to something I'm gonna do it and my whole goal was to I wanted to make sure that like they felt that they made the right decision by kind of taking a chance on me and I feel like having this too just adds to that and is like okay like making this complete career change. Like I'm in my thirties, like it's a big change from what I was doing. It just kind of is like a reassurance that like I did the right thing. I made the right move. So I'm really, it's yay. <laughs> That's awesome. What were you doing before um, you were into wedding and event planning? So I actually had two jobs. I've been waitressing. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> um, I was at a restaurant for 11 years. That's right down the street. I've been there since I was 19, 20 years old waitressing, doing counter, running the front. And then I also worked at a hospital that Westchester Medical Center owns. I was in the credentialing department. So I credentialed doctors, nurses, PAs. So nothing with what I'm doing now. <laughs> so it really was like quite a difference. So yes. what, what was it about wedding and event planning that kind of piqued your interest? So I had actually, I think I had mentioned this in the um, application. I was previously married and obviously, since I'm now getting married again, that didn't work out, which is fine. Totally fine. Um, <laughs> Everything I, happens I, for a reason. Exactly. I had the bug to do this back then, and I didn't have the support from my significant other then. So it just kind of like got washed into the table. And when I brought it up again this time, my fiance was very supportive. And he, and he said the same thing is, I think you'd be amazing at it. You're, you're so detail oriented. So that was just kind of the push I needed. And then I did some research into things and I was like, okay, like I could do this and I can. So <laughs> there, you, there you go. But it's just, it's so much fun. It's, I have a job that I feel like a lot of people go to work and they just go to work. I love going to work in the morning. I love doing what I'm doing. We just had a wedding on Saturday. It was my first Indian wedding and I was there at seven 30 in the morning and it was a long day, but it was worth every minute of it. It was so fun. And I, I just, I love what I do. That's so nice. Cause you don't always hear that from people. And I know <laughs> the job. And it's so nice that, you know, your job is, you know, we spend so much time at work, <laughs> no matter what our careers are, yeah. so, you know, to hear somebody who really, really enjoys it and is invested in it and, you know, in part of their life beyond just, you know, this is just a paycheck, something I have to do to survive. That's such a great, inspiring feeling. And it's a cool job. I mean, when people ask what you do, yeah, when you tell them, they're like, wow, that sounds so fun. And I'm like, it is fun. It's so <laughs> much fun. You mentioned that you just had an Indian wedding um, on Saturday. And I noticed in your application, you have 11 Hindu ceremonies planned. We do. Here. What is that like working with different cultures that maybe you're not as familiar with? And how did the program help you um, kind of, you know, approach that? the program helps like insane amount because there's a whole section on cultural things. There's a whole section on different religious aspects. Like my first solo wedding by myself was a Jewish wedding and they have strict things that like they do with the chuppah and, and like, there's so much that's involved in it that you're like your traditional Western ceremony only takes 15 minutes. It's not like that. So like, this was my first granted there was snow and ice and rain. So my first barat wasn't really your typical barat, but the whole idea behind the barat and they ended up doing two ceremonies. So that's why it started so early. They had breakfast in the morning. We cater out to um, a catering company to get 
like the food that they want specifically. So they like catered their lunch and it was like this whole big thing and seeing the different colored saris. And it's like, it's just, it's such an experience. And the Barat itself, we did it like inside, but they still had a horse there and the horse was all dressed up and it was just so much fun, like experiencing that Barat and just the feel and the energy. Like I was telling my director, I said, I didn't realize that they used like the incorporated American music into it, which they do. And I was like, this is, this is so much fun. Like, who, why can't everybody <laughs> have something like this? This is so much fun. <laughs> I've only been to one um, Indian wedding before and it was so beautiful and it was so engaging and just it's insane. I, I agree. Everybody should do it. <laughs> and it's so, it's so funny because everything, I feel like everything leading up to them, they all have designers and planners and it's so like detail oriented. And then when you get to it, it's just kind of like they take the reins and like, they just it's like so fun and free where like if you're in a western ceremony it's like no nobody's on your cell phone nobody do this and then you're at the hindu ceremony because it's it's like an hour and a half long and it's so much just the groom and his parents and the bride's parents first before the bride even walks into the room and then they're like in and out and they're like people are talking and i'm like it's so much more like the ceremony itself feels much more relaxed but everything leading up to it is so like and when you're there on the day, it's just like a giant party and the decorations and the stages and the mind up. It's all so beautiful. That's so exciting. I have to ask, how did you manage with the horse inside? The horse did not go inside. Okay, I was going to say the, like- where, my, um, the, where I work out of the clubhouse is connected to the hotel and there's like a carport. And when I say it was snowing, I drove in, it was raining. By the time the Barat started, everything had turned to snow. They got beautiful pictures because of the colors that they were in and the backdrop was all white. And I felt so bad. I was like, your poor feet, you're so cold. But like the horse, they just stayed under the carport, but their floor still had like an arch. So they still danced under the arch for the Barat outside a little bit. They were tossing the groom up in the air. Like it was so much fun. And the horse was... gorgeous it had like the gold decor on I was like oh my goodness I'm gonna need to see pictures of this (laughs) (laughs) I have a bunch I always take pictures of all my weddings (laughs) it sounds so amazing and such an exciting event to plan Um, yes uh, what have been some of your other interesting or exciting or even just different types of ceremonies that or you know just receptions that you've worked with we did um a ceremony they were oh, i can't remember her nationality but they had a bunch of drummers coming in before the bride and groom coming for the reception so you have to like time that right there's a lot of i mean the jewish ones but like we go through when we go through our detail meeting like certain speeches or if you're having a blessing or things like that so that also goes into it but i mean the the Indian ones are definitely the ones that take the most like when it comes to like detail planning and things like that and we have a lot of them (laughs) how many weddings do you usually have on average each month this year we have about 90 I'm going to assume the pandemic probably (laughs) yeah we have about 90 some of them are still pushbacks from covid um some of them are new bookings we're already booking for 2023 I think we already have some 2024 bookings as well so we have wow. all of our wedding tastings at the end of this month, the 27th. We do two grand like group tastings every month that I'm there for and set up and we like do the menu. So there's there's a lot that go into weddings. And then we also do like baby showers, bridal showers. I was just gonna birthday ask, birthday. you know, what type of other events do you do you work with or do yeah, you- baby showers, birthday parties? We do um we have a wine cellar. So we have one of the biggest wine Ooh. cellars on the East Coast at my location. And there's cheap wines to like thousands of dollars worth of bottles of wines. And you can do specific tastings, not even tastings, a dinner, but it's like a tasting menu. So there's smaller portions of like things that you wouldn't normally taste. Like the one thing that just sticks out to me is there was pork jowls on the menu. And like, to me, I have a boxer. So when I think jowls, I think of like dogs and like, it was just like, it's just stuck in my head that we had this pork jowl and I'm like, who would think to eat that? But everything is like, so like the, the drinks are custom to the menus and like they do wine tastings that pair with, I mean, it's, so we do dinners like that. We do all kinds of stuff, rehearsal dinners. We do a lot of rehearsal dinners for our weddings. We do after parties for our weddings in our biosphere, which is a huge hit. Cause who doesn't want to go swimming at one o'clock in the morning right. if you're <laughs> all day? We do breakfast the next day for the weddings. I do breakfast. So like, there's a lot that we offer. It's definitely like full (laughs) full service from start to finish. Exactly. 
definitely a loaded question, but how has it been since the pandemic started, you know, working in this field because, because so many people had to push their weddings back or scale them down. I mean, I, I mean, everybody faced challenges at work, but I think sometimes people forget like, you know, people who are in service industries and who, you know, do event planning, you guys have had to completely readjust. Yeah. Um, there's definitely like the concern of staffing. Like that's always a concern. Um, in the beginning, I would say when we had that surge again with that Omicron, we, um, we right now, Jersey doesn't have a mask mandate, so we're not wearing masks, but we personally had one for our company for uh, through March 1st, I want to say December through March 1st. So we were all wearing masks. Um, we didn't require it for our guests. A lot of the weddings still like brought masks though mm-hmm. for like if they, their guests wanted masks, if they wanted to use hand sanitizer, they like little hand sanitizers. We have hand sanitizer station. Um, counts definitely dropped. And we were really, especially last year and especially when like this new wave kicked in, like, you know, you have your counts that you have to meet and we have to be like, you know, flexible with certain things because we know like, like we have, um, I have a wedding at the beginning of April. She ended up getting COVID the week of her wedding. So she had to push back to April. And it's just like, it's heartbreaking to like, I, you know, you feel so bad for these people, but it's like, you know, we can, we'll, we'll make it work. Like we'll do what we can. So it's just, it's been, it's been a little stressful, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you mentioned that your previous partner didn't really support, um, you know, your dream or your passion. How, yeah. How does it feel now that you have somebody who really, you know, <laughs> it's great. It's, it's so, I mean, I should say it's great to a point because this is now what I do. So like planning our own wedding, he's kind of like, Oh, well, this is, you know, you, this is what you do for a living. You're fine. You don't need help. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 you could still help me, <laughs> but it's, it's so refreshing to have that support. And especially since I didn't really have it before. And like, this was something that was so different. And I was going, especially, like I said, we have the sections in there about the different cultures and it's like a huge section. And I was just like reading it all. And I was just, there's, there was so much. And he's like, you're no, I like, you know, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll, you're, you have a good personality for it. People will love you. And it worked out. And it's, it's really nice to have that support. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's hard enough, I think, to go back and start a course, you know, from scratch, especially something that you hadn't worked in before that you don't have a background in, but then, you know, support systems really are very, very very important to have Mm -hmm. because, you know, life can get extremely easy. So um, you did finish the course in six months. Like that's a great turnaround time. So academically, like what were some of the challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? Like, did you make schedules or to-do lists or, you know, what are some like just tips and tricks you might have for, you know, anybody? Spend the money on the textbook. (laughs) Spend the money on the textbook. I have it sitting in my desk drawer and like, especially with like these Hindu ceremonies and these weddings, I was going back and like refreshing because it's, it's nice to have that in print. It's a massive textbook and it's like not cheap, but it's worth every penny to have that textbook. Um, but I was taking notes. I had, for example, there's um, a section in there about popular readings for ceremonies. Like, uh, there was poetry, there were sections from the Bible, like different things that they suggested. And I actually referred to that. I made notes of all of just the things that they said. And there's some that about family. That's just about love. That's about partners. Like they broke it down into a bunch of different things. And I had a bride saying, oh, I meant to get readings and I didn't pick anything out. So I had this paper and I said, hey, here's a whole list of things. Look them up and see what you like. And it was like so helpful to just have that in a little notebook and I could just whip it out because I took notes of like things that I think would stand out more. That would be, you know, yeah, some things like which side men held swords on like in the day, like it goes way, way back to all these old traditions. And you're like, okay, well, I don't really need to know why like certain people stand in a certain way, but like certain things like that, different kinds of dresses. Like, do you really need to know what kind of dress? No, but it's nice to know the kind of veil that the girls have and how long their train is to know what kind of bustle they're kind of working with because certain bustles take longer to do than other bustles. <laughs> they're not always easy to do, but definitely um, planning out, trying to see like how long that, oh my God, these bug behave. 
Sorry. Um, I have two upstairs. <laughs> they're like going crazy over one toy. Um, definitely looking at like how long the sections were and timing out like how much time you would need. The projects at the end were, you know, some of them were detailing like a whole, a whole day. So it's like that definitely took time doing your research into like different venues for some of the projects. Yeah. Projects. That's what they were projects that they wanted you to do at the end of each chapter. So I would always, when I did that, I would, it would take me a couple of days just to do the projects because I wanted to make sure that like I did the best I could and you get the feedback and they type it up and they like leave you a message. So their feedback was so helpful too. And I was like, okay, well, that's, that's good to know. And I would like try and like save their feedback somewhere. So it was just, they give you like example templates of planning and stuff like that. I saved all the templates on my laptop. So I had them and I could refer back to them. So I love that you put together a list of all the readings because I was definitely that bride who was like, I didn't look at any of yeah. I no, I need some suggestions here because we were like the worst couple getting married. We were probably every wedding planner's nightmare because we just wanted something small and simple, but our families wanted something bigger. Of course, I know. Always really care about these details. That, mm-hmm. but I mean, I think that that is something that people don't take into account sometimes. Is if people think, oh, well, you're just planning a wedding, like it's fun party. Like there's so many finite details that go into it down to just spacing out the amount of time. Like you said, something as simple as just doing a bustle on a dress. Like you need to account for that amount of time. Or- especially if they want to go to cocktail hour. <laughs> exactly. I was just going to say, especially if you like, want to get the cocktails look, out my suggestion a warm is, dinner. <laughs> like suggestion, if when you go to get your final thing done, whether you can take a video or have somebody there, make sure they know how to bustle that dress. Cause the longer it takes them to bustle, the less time you have in cocktail hour. <laughs> so make sure they figure out how to bustle your dress. Oh my goodness. That's so, so true. So you mentioned, you know, all the templates and the feedback and everything, but Overall, what would you say was the best part of your program that you did? I would say the best part was I really enjoyed learning about the different cultural aspects and what different cultures do in different religions. I'm Catholic, so like I know that's really kind of all I knew was you do a full mass and then you kind of get married within 10 minutes of that mass and like that's it. And usually the bridal party sits down, more traditional, like my sister got married, which we, you know, she didn't do any of that. And we're not actually doing that, but we're having readings at ours where like it took 10 minutes. Like you go up there, you do your vows, you get it done and over with. So it's so different to see how different cultures and like they go into like different churches, like specific things for churches. I know my sister was looking at actually getting married in a Catholic church. There's like you can only choose certain readings that they want you to choose from you can only use certain entrance song that they want so it's all like certain things are more strict certain things are more lenient it's it's so interesting to learn like the different things of different religions and different cultures because it's all so different the colors i mean not everybody wears white we all associate weddings with a white dress not everybody wears white chinese culture doesn't wear white indian culture doesn't like you don't wear you don't wear white so it's like it's interesting that like there's so much different that we don't necessarily like can sit, think of when we think of a wedding. So it's fun to like learn all of that. That's so cool. Um, so you also mentioned in your application that you got a raise since you started. I did. Do you think the program helped to give you, obviously it helped you out academically and just, you know, having that, you know, hands-on knowledge, but do you think it also helped with your confidence in order to get to that point? You also started Definitely. solar weddings pretty quickly too, I believe. So what happened was I started in August 23rd was my start date. And I had like a week of training with like the computer system, all all that. And then I kind of like shadowed the other coordinator. And then um, I would say mid-October, she left and got a new job. And I had to take over all of her weddings in October that were like (laughs) mid-October and down that had already like met with her and done detail meetings with her. And now I'm having to like pick all these weddings up two, three weeks before. And she wasn't staying for like some, our director still had some weddings that had carried over from COVID that she was dealing with. And like, she wasn't staying to like the other coordinator wasn't really staying to help with those. So I was kind of like running the show with them. And my first solo wedding ever, it was a Jewish ceremony. And I was like, Oh boy, it's fine. Like I can do this. Like I had to stay calm and I had to do what I had to do, but it's like, the, the thing I think that made me like so much more confident after that first like solo wedding that I ran by myself was 
the groom had made a comment to somebody. And then he told me what he said that like, you can tell that she's been doing this for a long time because she was so like confident. And like the thing that was so important is like, I never, and I still do it to this day. I will do everything I can not to say no to my couples the day of, like, I will do everything I can. If I can't, like, I can't change the weather. If we have to do it inside, we have to do it inside. There's nothing I can do about it, but I will do everything I can to not say no. And when he said that, all I could think with my head was, wow, well, that made me feel really good because oh, this is my first one by myself. So I'll take it. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so nice. That definitely yeah. had to be a huge ego boost. And, yeah. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I'm sure that each scenario is different. Each situation is different. Each event is different. But what would you say is the most challenging part of the job? Lining people up and getting them down the aisle in an orderly fashion. I, I always say I don't, like I'm laughing cats. because I just I'm picturing my wedding and how difficult it was to just get it's like hurting cats. That's what I be, tell them. Yeah, like to just yeah. be quiet and listen and do what you're supposed. And they're never quiet. I, like to especially it. it's it's different when it's an outside ceremony and we're like there's a, such a gap between where the ceremony is versus where we're lining up. But when it's inside and we have to do like the air wall up and we're using half the ballroom, mm-hmm. you're literally on the other side of the wall where the guests are. And I'm constantly saying, guys they can hear you. If I can hear you, they can hear you. And they were down another hallway and I was in getting like, making sure everybody was standing. We had an aisle runner. So I took a ribbon off and I walked around the corner and it was, it was a couple the groom worked at the same resort. He was in the kitchen. So I got really close with the bride and I walked around the corner and I go, guys, I can hear you in the ballroom. So can we like keep it down a little bit? And the bride was like, I love her. I'm like, guys, come on, like, let's go. Like you're in a room at a certain time because I know it's going to take me 10, 15 minutes to walk you 10 feet down the hallway. Cause you're going to be like, okay, well, where's this? And I need this. And I'm just like, okay, let's go people. (laughs) I totally, I can just aisle on time. I know the entire time. thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I definitely think that that makes sense. Just trying to get <laughs> to do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. Yes. And then if it's an indoor ceremony, the flip, I mean, we have an hour to flip a room and that's always just <sighs> a little bit of, I mean, granted there's a whole team. We have housemen, we have our servers, we have our banquet managers, the floor, like there's so many people there, but to flip sometimes 22 tables in an hour, depending on how your centerpiece is centerpieces may not be on if they're tall centerpieces. So it's like, that's always a stressful moment. And like, you're lighting the candles and then you're like, okay, they can come in and see the room. Everything's done now. So it's like, <laughs> but it's, it's always just a little bit of a stress that's got nothing to do with anybody else. Just your own stress that you're putting on yourself yeah. to make sure you're getting it done in time for them. How does that feel when they do walk in and they see, oh, I love it. And just- I, I love just like opening that door. Cause especially when it's a flip and they see the ceremony space and then like, it's completely redone. Like this wedding on Saturday, they did two ceremonies in there. So it changed. We flipped the room three times. We had an hour and a half to do the flip to the reception because of the, how the way they timed their ceremony, which was needed. But I mean, they walked in and they're like, I can't believe how different it looks. How were you able to pull it off in such a short time? And I'm like, we did it. <laughs> it was time, but we did it. And it's just, it's so nice to like, see them walk in and they're always so excited. And then like, Oh my God, it looks amazing. I'm just like, okay. Okay. Now I can relax. <laughs> <laughs> running around lighting Uh, candles with lighters (laughs) (laughs) it is such a high pressure job and I mean and for somebody who finished the course in such a quick turnaround how I mean I imagine you probably just hit the ground running got through work but how important was it for you to take time for yourself did you take time for yourself to kind of just sometimes like did you ever feel overwhelmed and have to take a step back and say like I need five minutes. I need an hour. You know, this laundry can wait or, you know, to put when I get home off for a little bit wedding days, like I get home and I'm, that's it. I'm done. Like I don't talk to me. I I need to (laughs) like just, and then, um, so when we do like the tastings too, like the tastings, cause we, you know, they're two hour tastings, but like, sometimes we have 60 people at them. We do like 10 weddings at a time. And they're always, it's, this is the first time we're meeting our couples. So there's always tons of questions and we're walking around and we're asking them about the food. And if you have any questions and we take them to see the bridal suite and like our ballroom had gotten redone. So we're taking them to the ballroom. And like the big thing that I'm 
super excited about is we just got our own gold shivari chairs yesterday (laughs) so i was like jumping up and down i got outside i was like they're here our chairs are here we were supposed to get them months ago but they got held up because everybody's you know with the shortages Mm -hmm. and everything they were stuck on a boat they were stuck here they were stuck there and that's every bride was asking about these chairs and i felt so bad telling them i don't i don't know when they're coming I, I don't, I don't want to say, yes, we'll have them for your wedding in six months and lie to you. So we're just kind of like, I, I can't. So now I'm very excited to now be able to tell our brides that, Hey, we got the chairs. <laughs> like they're in, I'm so happy. But sometimes just little things like chairs, just like stress you out, like little silly things we had. Um, it's the weddings that like, especially when the weather's involved and they want to be outside and like, there's, there's only so much we can do. So I always feel bad when I have to like go in and tell them that like we have to move. There's just, it's there's no way too cold or there's too much hard snow on the ground or in the summertime, this, the, the rain, like there's only, it breaks my heart to have to tell them that, but that's always just a little thing. You're like, oh, man, I don't want to have to tell them this, but I don't have a choice. And you're just kind of like working yourself up. Like, All right, it's okay. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. <laughs> the, so you're talking about like chairs and everything and, and the style of certain things. So Obviously, the course helped a lot in terms of, you know, cultural differences and ceremonies. But how about like stylistically, um, you know, how how did the coursework factor into what you actually apply to your everyday um, situations now? It's good to have that background of like certain things because they kind of give you an idea of like what kind of is more modern, what kind of isn't certain like different like feels for different weddings and everybody has their own feel for their own wedding so it's some people are more we had a wedding in January it was very like moody she wanted to be outside there's just we weren't able to do it she had like trees inside it was very like the girls were in that like emerald green dress that was velvet the boys were in all black like it was very foresty like she had a lot of like moody vibes to it and it's just like okay well what can we do on our end to add to this so like she had these birch trees and like I said she wanted to be outside she couldn't so we kind of went with what she gave us and brought the outside inside to her ceremony and we used her trees and we used her birch trees and we had some up lights so we did like that bright white up light to give her that moody feel in the ballroom and like so we're able to use what we have like we have some like little tiny votives we have lanterns so if they don't have stuff that they bring I kind of just run with what we have and like kind of try and give them the same feel that they're going with, which I don't necessarily know that I would have had as much knowledge in like certain, like what you would consider like a bohemian feel, what would you consider a more modern feel, more rustic feel, stuff like that. Cause we're a country club. Yes. But we're a country club up in the mountains. So it's like, it, you know, the, the feels go either way. <laughs> it kind of all depends. We have people who make their own, um centerpieces like those wooden flowers so it's kind of like okay well the wooden flowers like we have wood lanterns like if they don't have stuff we can bring the lanterns up and put them with your card table or with your favors or with we do a drink station we decorate the drink station with if we have real flowers we'll use real flowers if your florist is there and I see your florist I'm like hey do you have any extra flowers so I can maybe add it to this table or add it to this table or do you have rose petals you can give me or do you have this that sometimes they have extra centerpieces that they pay for you know, if they say we need 15 and there's only 14 tables, as long as they tell me it's okay, I'll take that centerpiece apart and I'll use the flowers everywhere I can use the flowers. Or so it's nice to have that background of what, what different styles are like, what, and what goes with what. So it's, it's good to have that. That's great. And you mentioned just now about, you know, working with the florists and previously you mentioned working with different caterers. How did the course prepare you for that dealing with other people who are in the same field, but do something slightly different? Um, It definitely helps. So we call everybody, all of their vendors, florists, DJs, um, hair, makeup, video. They have a photo booth that's not already incorporated in that. Uh, We call them all the week of for the caterer. We have to give them the menu. We have to get an equipment list. We have to know what time they're coming. So there's a lot of stuff that's involved, like with a DJ, just are you guys bringing a microphone or are we supplying a microphone? Like, that's not something that I would have ever thought of. And when I like go through meetings with their brides, they're like, oh, I don't know. And it's like, okay, well, that's fine. I can figure it out because I'm asking. So I'll be the one that figures it out. But it's like not something that I would have thought of if I hadn't like 
taking a course or like the florists when they're coming in with their stuff. And I called and I'm like, okay, well, how long do you need to set up? And like ceremony happens this time. So we'll make sure you do the ceremony first. Like what kind of stuff do you have for the arbor? Do you have just like a full on garland? Sometimes they're just corner pieces. Do you have stuff? So it's nice to have a background of like what they do. I know that it, florists take a long time. It's it's a hard craft. Not everybody can do what florists do in the short amount of time that they do it. So it's nice to have a background, even certain flowers, like they'll come in. Sometimes they come in with flowers that I've never seen before. And I always ask them, Oh my goodness. Like what, what flower is that? Like I've never, I mean, the back, it, the book gives you like different things. I'm like what certain color flowers mean, like a white rose or a red rose or like certain things like that. But we had a wedding, it was in October and we had like these, they were these yellow roses. They were like a mustard yellow. I've never seen a rose that color before. And I was so impressed with, I'm always so impressed with what these florists bring in because it's incredible what they do. And like DJs, we have DJs coming from, they come from all over. We had a DJ on Saturday. He does a bunch of like AV stuff on the side. And it's so cool to like get to know these DJs. The DJ that actually did my sister's wedding, did a wedding a couple months ago. And I was like, you did my sister's wedding in 2019. And he was like, Oh yeah. The one at dramatic home. I was like, yeah. He's like, what do you, you work here? And I'm like, yeah, I work here. <laughs> so it's nice to get, and then you get to know them, like our preferred vendors, you get to know the florist, you get to know one of the florists um, that we work with a lot came in and gave us all like little Christmas ornaments. So it's like, Aww. it's nice to get to know these people and like have that connection to them. Like DJ it's, it's nice to know that photographer, same thing. Like we have photographers that get used all the time that are on our preferred vendors and they know the property versus people who don't know the property. When I'm calling them, that's one of the first things I say, have you been here before? If not get here half an hour earlier and I'll show you all the popular spots to do a first look or do bridal party photos. Or if she's doing a first look with her dad, use her bridal suite. There's a balcony in her bridal suite. Use that with her. Like, so there's certain things that I'm able to like help with too, that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of if I didn't have the background with the course. That's so awesome. So what um, would you say to somebody who's on the fence about going back to school, especially if it's a totally different field from what they've already worked in or just the first time in a few years, you know, what, what would you recommend to them? If it's something you really, really want to do and like, it's not something that you're just like, I woke up one day and was like, ah, I think I might want to do it. Like, it's not, cheap to go back to school. And especially nowadays, like everything's getting so expensive, gas prices are going up. It's just, everybody's concerned about money. And like, I get it. So I wouldn't say if it's something you just wake up and you're like, eh, I want to do it. Like, no, make sure you can invest the time in it. Make sure you can invest the money into it, but it's worth it. Like there's nothing wrong with it. And I was, when I was like going into the course, one of the things they asked you was like, why are you going into this course? Is it just because you're planning your own wedding? And I mean, to do it just to plan your own wedding, I think is not really worth it because you're going to use it what once but if you have like a passion to do stuff like this then definitely go for it if you have a passion for anything I know they you guys offer like other like what like interior designer and, and stuff like that so if you want to do stuff like that I would say go for it like especially if you're doing this for the very first time and it's a completely like I want to do something completely different I want to do this then take the course like take the course and put it Everywhere you go, let the people know that you're taking it because it, it makes a big difference. Well, that's it's so nice to hear. And so what would you say? So say somebody's like, okay, that's great. I woke up. I've been thinking about this. I really want to do it. I'm going to do it. What would you tell them about the New York Institute of Art and Design? It was great. And I can only speak from the course that I took, but having the instructors go through and like look at the projects you submit and actually like make notes on what you've submitted like pulling specific things out of what you've done it's so helpful to have that because you're not one-on-one -on -one in a classroom you're doing it on your own time but they're taking the time to go through what you submitted and really looking into what you submitted and like detailing information, what they think you could do better, what you could have done differently. So it's really helpful to, to have that. And the course is so detailed. And like I said, the textbook is like 600 pages long. So to have all of that information like on hand whenever you need it is so helpful. And yeah, I think they give you all the information you would need to, like I said, I know this is really to start your own business, they definitely give you a whole chapter on businesses and how to write contracts and how to read contracts and 
it's helpful even in my aspect because we, everybody signs a contract with us. So like I was able to go through and I, I look at the contracts and I know what I'm looking for. And like, it tells me what your minimum spend is and how much your rooms are. So I have all that information and I know what I'm looking for specific things in specific contracts. So it's helpful in that you have everything at your fingertips. If you do it online, the exact thing in the textbook is the exact same thing you have online. So it's so nice to have all of that information that you need right there. Like it, it's so helpful. You're not like doing your projects and like, okay, I, don't, I have no idea where to turn because the entire chapter you just did gives you every answer you need and you just have to take it and run with it and apply it to what you need to do. Well, thank you so much for all of this information and your experience. I really appreciate it. Thanks. It was fun.